Yo, yo, yo. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Uh, this time, we're going to be uh, talking about Napoleon Hill's uh, principle, the mastermind philosophy. Now, um, the book, 16 Laws of Success, really, really popular book. And I'd just like to go through some of the points that I've highlighted in this book to share with you some valuable knowledge um, uh, from this book. And by sharing, it uh, will help me understand it a little bit better. So, Mastermind. He states that salespeople who can use this well will see sales increase to unbelievable proportions. And uh, so much so that it will stagger the imagination of even the most highly optimistic person. And uh, he states that people buy personality as much as they buy goods. I find that really interesting. Like sometimes you'll just watch something, not even because of like the product or service or whatever, simply just because of the person. Uh, he states here that 99%, uh, 99 out of 100 people who purchase life insurance policies do not know what it is, their pol what is in their policies, and what seems even more startling, don't seem to care. <laughs> and he goes on to say that success, what is success? Uh, success is the attainment of what you want most in life <clears throat> without violating the rights of others. That's his definition of success. The attainment of what you want most in life without violating the rights of others. Ah, oh, such a beautiful sort of <clears throat> a statement for what success is. And he says that knowledge, knowledge is the studying, classifying and assimilating of facts which have been organized by other, other people. And through one's own process of, of ga gathering, um, organizing and classifying facts uh, generally called personal experience. <clears throat> and uh, uh, he states here that the advancement, the advancement of civilization is but the measure of the knowledge which that race has accumulated. Mm. Can we can we take a second? He says the advancement of um, civilization is but the measure of the knowledge which that race has accumulated. Damn, that's deep. That is that is some deep stuff, and he says uh, to understand how knowledge is gathered, uh, we have to first look at the smallest particles um, of physical matter, and um, he turns to uh, say that in the in the world of physical matter, from the smallest grain of sand to the largest stars out there in the heavens. Um, what we are seeing is but an organized collection of molecules, atoms, and electrons revolving around one another at inconceivable speeds. So, from the smallest particle to the to the to the biggest uh, planets and galaxies out there, that is what we are seeing. <clears throat> and he says, ether is the uh, is the same energy vibrating fluid that causes the atoms to circle one another. And uh, considered to be the same energy we call electricity. Um, others call it vibration, he states. And uh, he goes on to mention about how the human ear can detect uh, 32,000 to 38,000 vibrations per second. And, um, and uh, talks about how to be successful in finding out your true power, you must combine determination uh persistence and a well defined uh well defined desire to gather knowledge so i'm going to repeat that to be successful um is fi in and finding your true power is to combine determination persistence and a well defined desire to gather and organize knowledge um so he says this has an analogy here um, say you have a iron rod that vibrates with any desired frequency um, in a dark room. At first, when vibrating slowly, its movements will be indicated by one sense, touch. So, 
Okay. As soon as the, the vibration increase, a low sound will start to emanate. You, so you'll actually start to hear it and it will appeal to the two senses, touch and hearing. Uh, at 30, at about 32,000 vibrations um, to the second, the sound will be loud and shrill. But at 40,000 vibrations, it will be silent and the movement of the rod will be will not be perceived by touch. Wow, so it's vibrating so much to the point, now it feels still. Its movements will be perceived by no ordinary human sense. Uh, from this point uh, to about uh, 1,500,000 vibrations per second, we have no sense that can appreciate any effect of the intervening vibrations. It says, after, state is reached, after this state is reached, movement is, is indicated by the sense of temperature. So, okay, now it starts to, starts to get um, hot. And then, when the rod becomes red hot by the sense of light, okay, and then at 3 million uh, vibrations per second, it sheds violet light. Uh, above that, it sheds ultraviolet light, ultraviolet rays, and other invisible radiation, some of which can be perceived by instruments employed by us so every mind he states is a broadcasting and receiving station for the for the vibration of thought it says every mind or brain is directly connected with every other brain by means of the ether it says it is of the author that's Every thought vibration released by any brain is picked up by the ether and kept in motion in a um, circulatory uh, wavelength um, corresponding in, in length to the intensity of the energy used in the release. That these vibrations remain in motion forever. That they are one of the two sources from which thought pops into someone's mind emanates. Um, the other source being direct and immediate contact through the ether the brain releasing the thought vibration so he's basically saying that the thoughts that we think based on their intensity is released out there into the ether and it explains why sometimes whenever like say we have like a goal or or or, or a path that we want to go down and we feel intense about it or something, we start to attract certain thoughts just like pop into our head like you're like cleaning dishes or something like that and then boom, you just get hit with an idea. Boom, you get hit with another idea. Boom. It's like, where are these thoughts coming from? His approach to this is that he states that thoughts um, based on their intensity uh, uh, have, have, have been uh, uh, transmuted into the ether and are floating out there um, forever uh, waiting to be perceived and transmitted by the brain you know every mind is a broadcasting and receiving station for the vibration of thought it's very very interesting and he says one that one may gather knowledge classify and organize useful knowledge through harmonious alliance with two or more minds of which grows the mastermind so this is what he uh, is stating in relation to what a mastermind is the first three years of association after marriage, he brings up, are often marked with disagreement um, of a more or less petty nature. And if the marriage shows them, it is more than apt to become a permanent alliance. So this is his, uh, this is his observation. And he talks about, goes on to talk about, you know, this like, you know, mind sort of power chemistry. He says that a master salesman knows the moment of which the psychological time for closing has arrived not by words but by the effect of the chemistry of his mind as interpreted or felt by the salesman okay i uh, said so the brain is like uh an electric battery that will get tired run down feel discouraged we've all been there and lacking pep and uh, he states that great leaders know how to recharge um, their brains. Great leaders know how to recharge their mind battery. And what's interesting is that 
uh, Les Brown, who's a really a well-known uh, motivational speaker, he talks about how uh, listening to to motivational content, inspirational content every day changed uh, his life and how it will change your life too. Yeah, he actually goes on. Uh, Napoleon Hill goes on to say the great. The, that's is actually the main uh, different. Um, differentiating factor in leaders uh, versus followers is this ability to stimulate their mind, recharge their batteries. And he says that through the principle of harmoniously blending minds together, uh, he says perfect health may be enjoyed um, and uh, solving of any economic crisis uh, could be um, averted. Uh, he states that Firestone, uh, Henry Ford and Edison well-known people in the past um, like Henry Ford and Edison not quite sure about Firestone um, at least from my um, um, understanding he states that they would meet in the woods once a year so that was very interesting they would they would meet up and he states that the blending of six minds uh, six people you wish to study and gather knowledge from uh, will create a sixth sense uh, whenever uh, you guys come together uh, of which each individual develop a more vivid imagination. And he states that whenever uh, you come together for a topic, say, uh, ideas will come forth as if an outside hand was dictating the move. Ooh. And um, he states that uh, you will be connecting with uh, God energy known as the ether, uh, which touches every atom of the entire universe and states that all the so-called geniuses probably gain the reputation because by mere chance or otherwise they formed alliances with other minds which enabled them to step up their own mind vibration to where they were uh, enabled uh, to contact the vast temple of knowledge recorded and filed into the ether of the universe. And uh, states that all great geniuses, as far as the author has been in, um, enabled to gather, um, were highly sexed people. And he states about whenever it comes to organizing knowledge, um, it's best to organize knowledge and express it through intelligent effort. So there you have it. That is my notes on Mastermind. Uh, whenever all of these are, um, I've made all the videos for these, I'm going to compile the action points of each and in the, in the, in the main, main key parts of each. So, uh, so stay tuned and uh, let me know what you, I uh, think about that mastermind blending together of minds uh, to step up your mind vibration and attract uh, new thoughts into your brain. And uh, yeah, that being said, thank you very much for tuning in. Peace, love, veganism. Like and subscribe. Share it if you know anyone who's into Napoleon or self-help. And yeah, peace.